Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Salesforce Admins webinar, Admins Guide to Profiles and Permissions. Thank you so much for your patience, for bearing with us. Uh, we're having a couple of technical challenges today, so hopefully you are with us. Again, thank you for your patience. So we are going to kick today off, and I'm going to kind of speed through uh, our opening sessions here. My name is Mark Baseman. I'm a senior admin evangelist at Salesforce. And with me today is Sharon Liao. Hi, everyone. Of course, our forward-looking statement, uh, please make your purchasing decisions based only on products and services that are currently available. And please connect with us on social media, and don't forget about our website, admin.salesforce.com. We are recording today, uh, and we may, in fact, do another recording uh, so that everyone uh, gets a chance to experience this again. So we will record today, and we will post this to YouTube and the recap page. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please post those questions in the admin webinar group, the Salesforce admins webinar group in the Trailblazer community. We will be in that community to help answer questions there. So here's what we're going to talk about today. The principle of least privilege, profile and permission set quick review and best practices, next generation of user management, permissioning tools and demo, hopefully, uh, resources and Q&A. So let's start with the principle of least privilege. The concept of this principle is that users should have the least number of permissions necessary to do their job and nothing more. So really, at the end of the day, that means that you want to give people the right level of access to do their roles. And you don't need to give them access to the entire house or kingdom. So I'm going to turn it over to Sharon, who's going to talk about the profile and permission set, quick review, and best practices. Awesome. Thank you, Mark, and thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, I am Sharon Leal. I am a Salesforce product manager with the platform administration team that provides services and tools to help our admins, which is you guys, uh, manage users in your org efficiently. So I remember when I first stepped in my product uh, journey in this domain of user management, and especially from the admin perspective, it was really a big knowledge hurdle to understand how I can how can I give my user the right access in a way that is secure but also easy to manage. So today as we're gonna take a deep dive into this profile and permission set together, I hope sharing what I know from the product perspective can really help you learn and adopt the best practices. And also I want to bring you on board with some of our upcoming product design and then uh, it's going to be about how we imagine the permission management can be optimized to make your job easier. So if I can have you guys walk out of the webinar today with only one key takeaway, that will be use permission set and don't think about profile anymore. Permission set are the vehicle that should remain in your head from today from managing user access control in your work. So why am I saying that? I'd like to start from the very beginning of understanding the difference between these two features. Um, some of you, our experienced admin, might already be familiar with this concept, but for those who are still wondering sometimes, why do I have the separate tools of doing the same thing, um, and which one should I choose? Here's a little bit of background in history. I think every user permissioning decision you made today is essentially answering the question, who has access to what? I'm going to use my favorite analogy here that it's like you have a very nice villa and then as an admin, you hold accountable the gatekeeping responsibility for ensuring your property is secure and protected. Um, you decided which guests in our context here is the end user are allowed to visit what areas of the house. Profile and permission set are two ways of distributing this access. And obviously, you already know that you have profile because every user has to be assigned with a profile at creation. It's like the front door of your org because um, they are the way that user get their user license. But also because um, the user's license limitation, there's, there can only be one profile per user. So I'd like to encourage you to think of them as the baseline authorization, stuff that can't take away and requires this one-to-one -one relationship with the user. And a bit later in winter 12, I believe, um, we released a perm set. When we built it, we really are aiming to introduce a, mo a more dynamic permissioning model, which Profile doesn't support due to its one-to-one -one restriction. 
we built permission set um, really as molecules, and then we built them for layering so you can mix them up. You can give them to different sets of users. They're like the keys to different rooms, and then you can give, give that multiple to a single guest um, in my previous analogy. So um, from a lot of my conversation with admins, profile today is due to more predominant tools they go to when they need change any perm sets. Um, probably because it has it, the org has has profile for a longer time and lots of stuffs are already wired with it. So from the nature of these two features, you can really start to understand. Uh, probably you already experienced some of the pain of using profile, which I'm gonna explain in a simple example here. Let's say you got a standard sales user profile, which is one of the outer box profile um, you got from the sales cloud user license. Well, some of your sales users need additional access to view and create public reports, and some do not. So you ended up with cloning the profile and save it as sales user with access to report. Now, some other sales user who are in the manager role also need access to a pipeline forecasting app to manage workload of their team. So then you have to clone another profile, and then um, as shown as the screen, things can get out of hand quickly. Um, you ended up with four profiles in this case. And your next new feature will take you from four to eight and the next from eight to 16. So it keeps proliferating. Um, and especially think about once your word grows into a larger, um, larger enterprise or larger user pool, you will have to, you will have to manage so many profiles. Well, with permission set on the other hand, on the right side of the screen, um, you can identify permissions required for those individual tasks, access to report, and access to forecast, and create a, one permission set for each of them. Assign one or both to your users, and they can share one single sales user profile. The flexibility and um, the stackable nature of it really helps you keep fewer profile numbers and variations in your work, allowing things to be under control. And it's more sustainable um, as you can easily apply permission set combinations for new users to come on board or users who recently changed their jobs. It's going to be extremely helpful, like I said, once uh, your business grows larger and you brought in more new features. So the secret sauce that allows you to shift from permission set um, as a better way to manage things are tie, uh, manage things that today are tied to profile. Um, is really that they actually share the same da data model from um, behind the scenes. And if you're a more tax savvy admin, you already found out that um, every profile is actually supported by a permission set um, from the database standpoint. Which means as you configure a profile, permissions that added to it actually is represented by a backing uh, permission set record in the system. Um, for a user assignment. So there are a few things that might still be appropriate to stick with profile, and here's a cheat sheet I prepared for you guys with the breaking down elements in the profile that you can uh, migrate it, and those are supported by permission set. Um, you can use this sheet to uh, figure out what can be moved and what cannot. So instead of remembering what can be moved, I would recommend you to only see what cannot be moved. So essentially, there are two categories. One, things that I previously refer as baseline authorizations, like your logging policies. And another is things that require this one-to-one -one default settings, such as your user have to have a default record type or page layout when they first land it on the page. So we have covered the compelling benefits of switching to perm set. I hope it's compelling for you guys. It's a stackable and reusable, flexible to manage, and keeps access granting streamlined. Um, I hope this is convincing enough um, for you to consider to hop on this migration journey. But if not, here I'm going to add one more important reason. That is, by adopting this permission set, you really get free the next generation of user management model that Salesforce, uh, uh, we are investing in. So let's talk about this next generation vehicle, um, permission set group, which is a feature that's um, currently in pilot. 
Um, a lot of time I heard from admins using PermSet, um, um, the complaint is that it sometimes can go very granular and there's no intermediate stage where um, I know that this group of user requires a particular combination of PermSets for their daily jobs. There's no way I can assign all PermSet at once. So as we developed this grouping um, mechanism, we, we really want to relieve that painful process by offering a way to allow combining different perm sets to a single group for easier assignment. And it's more than that. Whenever you have an update in your permission set, the platform will do the legwork for you to propagate all the changes to permission set groups that contain the tweaked permission set and giving your users the aggregated permissions across all perm sets um, in, your, in your group. So um, it's going to be even better if you have a managed package in your org where your um, ISV partners has predefined permissions for accessing their uh, managed apps. And features. So you no longer have to clone those managed perm set if you don't like the way they define it and you don't want to, want to assign exactly what they define to your users. You can simply modify the group by extending or removing um, permission set in the group and in this way you still get the latest and greatest when the managed uh, when, when manage package is upgraded. So we don't have enough time to dive into uh, how exactly you can interact with this pilot feature, but I do recorded a demo, which is going to be shared with you guys in the handoff link. Um, and if you're interested, you can become uh, one of our pilot participants. So with this grouping mechanism, what we are really wanted to lead you to this um, future versions of role-based user access control model is that uh, if you look at the screen vertically, you will have your all your one-on-one -on -one settings um, with your profile, which is going to keep things um, keep only a very few variations of your profile easier to manage. And then you arrange your permissions by, uh, at the task level in permission set. Those task levels can be grouped together to represent the user's role and then put into permission set group. And by roles here, I do want to make a clarification. I don't mean Salesforce hierarchy roles. I mean more of the canonical job roles, like you got someone in your org as inside sales and then outside sales or a cost center person. You can easily represent uh, what they need um, as in terms of permission for their daily jobs by adding your permission set to a custom groups or extending or uh, changing your managed group. While the standard permission set groups here is something that we're still refining, um, we envision that this becomes, uh, this becomes the auto box um, roles that Salesforce um, thinks, for example, in Sales Cloud, we think that represents a typical sales user, um, and that's something we, we, we're going we're gonna to keep investing in the future. So I know some of you might say, okay, sounds appealing to me, but it's a little bit intimidating and then I already got hundreds of profile in my org. How do I get to the state I can fully adopt permission set and this group feature um, you're talking about here? I understand this sounds like a big lift um, and don't worry, don't panic. That's why we are here to help. Uh, we have prepared you tools and then that's why I'm here to introduce this profile and permission set helper. Uh, which is a free app you can download from the uh, Salesforce App Exchange to help you uh, with this migration and ensure the labor is not falling on you. So I want to talk through um, the key uh, features for in this helper app really quick, and then don't worry, I'm gonna, not going to stick with slides. We're going to dive into demo. Uh, time allows, if time allows. Okay, so there are two components in this helper app. One is converter, as shown in the screen. So this converter allows you, within a, only very few clicks, that you can convert a profile and the permissions that are associated in your profile to a permission set. It's a perfect tool designing, especially when you uh, have license upgrade, and then you don't want to um, building a new profile um, for the, your new license from scratch. Also, it supported both standard profiles and custom pro profiles. And then the second um, component um, I'm, I want to introduce is a permission analyzer. Um, this analyzer will allow you to view um, all the summation of a permission of permissions that assigned to a single user in one screen. I know a lot of you are uh, experienced the pain of um, getting through um, that information for a single user in our setup UI today. So that's where this help, uh, this analyzer can really help release that pain. 
and then it also will allows you to view what permissions are coming from where. Is it from profile or is it from the permissions that I just cloned from my profile? Um, and then all the data transactions are secure in your org and uh, it respects your um, user management settings um, and you decide who has access to these apps um, and who does not. So, okay, I'm going to ask Mark to pass me the ball, a ball to um, show you how you can interact with this in your org. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, nice. So, let's get started. Um, how you can find this per, uh, helper app once you download it and start in your org is by searching in your Lightning um, profile and profile and permission set helper that comes up here. So let's go into that. It's going to land it on the page by default um, as converter, but if you prefer uh, permission analyzer um, as a more frequent use tool, you can simply drag it um, as the default screen. So from the converter here, it, the logic is very simple. It shows you a list of profiles that are available in your org. I have um, 29 items here in my demo org, but in reality, you probably have hundreds. So how can you get to the profile that you want to get rid of and then migrate to permset? Uh, that's where the search functions get, um, becomes helpful here. You can filter by license. For example, I'm only targeting Salesforce license user's license here. And also, uh, I don't want to touch any of the standard uh, profile. I only want to convert a custom um, profile only. So that will limit you to um, the custom profiles that are available today um, in my org. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this sales profile. Um, by clicking on the drop downs here, you can choose to either view the profile details before you convert it, understand what are included, or, or um, today I'm just going to dive right in to convert to permission set. So I'm giving it a name as cloned from um, custom, sorry, custom sales profile. Okay. Um, and then just a heads up that this app, when you're converting, it doesn't take uh, record types and your tab visibility. Um, that's something we might iterate and enhance in the future, but currently it's not included in this version. So I'm going to click on convert and wait a few seconds, maybe sip your coffee or tea. And now from here, your all of your profiles and um, permissions included with that profile. There are field permissions, object permissions, and then setup entity permissions and user permissions are all going to be cloned and then uh, uh, available for you in this particular permission set. So you can, um, re you can lift the screen and then with the click and then arrive on this new permission set that is create it and then go right into manage assignment, which is the uh, experience you're very familiar with already today. So I won't dive into that. Okay, now, uh, when I previously demoed this to our customers, people will ask me, okay, Sharon, don't I just create it like hundreds? I, I, I have hundreds of profile in my award. Don't I just create it hundreds of permission set instead? And then it still doesn't help me with the headache of understanding who has access to what. So that's where the permission analyzer comes in to help you ease the pain. pain. And then I'm going to take the, um, the upcoming Lightning uh, auto enablement as an example. I know a lot of you guys um, might feel a little bit an anxious about this auto en enablement coming up and know exactly who is going to be uh, logging to Lightning by default have with this uh, Lightning experience user permission, but I don't know who in my org actually are entitled with that permission. So um, there are two modes in this analyzer, and then you can leverage the analyze by permission mode to resolve that problem. Um, so going to analyze by permission, and then I know the lightning experience permission is the user permission type, and then I can find that here by just searching, um, typing lightning experience user. Okay. Now give it a second to round. Okay, now on the right side of the screen, you have a whole list of users who are entitled with this Lightning Experience user permission. And then you know that um, when the auto enablement, enablement criti critical update comes up to date, 
um, these are the users you probably need to give a heads up uh, about this changing experience. Um, and then if you want to make sure that, okay, I do want to commit to migration to Lightning, and then I want all of my users to have it, and then how can I do that? Um, there are available permission sets today that are uh, already contain this um, Lightning Experience user available in your org, so you can click them um, by uh, view them by the list on the left side, or also view the profiles that contain this permission, um, and then assign them to the target user in your org. Um, now, I understand uh, what who are entitled to the specific permission, but what if I want to view like Sharon? What does Sharon has and his uh, in her uh, in in her permission landscape, uh, what else does she have? You can easily switch to that context by clicking on the drop-down and show the user permissions uh, that they're, they're entitled to share in today. So let's go that. Um, and then looking at the screen, you can see um, the app already automatically switch the context for you from analyzed by permission to analyzed by user. And you have um, Sharon's profile and then these are the uh, permission set that Sharon's are entitled with. So let's take um, access to case as an example. If I want to understand, does Sharon has access to case? And I'm, I'm evaluating whether she needs that. Um, by diving into the specific object, you can see, OK, Sharon has create um, to this case object. And where does that come from? It's entitled through her system administration profile um, and it also another permission set I assigned to her called case management. Maybe I want to remove that. That's where the consideration comes in as you're analyzing through this process. Okay, that's um, my demo and then um, about this helper app. And then there are two um, components that we show you guys today. I'm going to pass the ball back to Mark um, to talk about the resources. We cover that. Thank you for that demo, Sharon, and thank you for this super, super informative webinar. This is amazing, and I hope all of you listening are enthralled like I am. So you probably want to get your hand on this app. Well, this app is part of the Salesforce Labs app program. If you're not familiar with this program, these are apps that are created by Salesforce employees and are provided for free to the community on the App Exchange. These apps are not official Salesforce apps and therefore are not supported by Salesforce help. However, uh, Sharon and her team are active in the community. So if you do have questions, please post in the community with the permission helper app uh, hashtag. We have some other resources for you, um, some videos here of the Who Sees What video series, which is a great security uh, security series. Also that um, permission set group pilot demo that uh, that Sharon mentioned earlier, we have a walkthrough video of that. Um, also, if you want to learn more about data security, Trailhead is the place to go. And there's a great blog article on the Salesforce admins blog as well. So um, again, we don't have time for live Q&A today, so by all means, please post your questions in the group. Um, we may not be able to get to them all today, but we're looking to get to those uh, certainly by the end of the week. Um, also, there will be a survey that comes up. Please, please let us know what you thought of this webinar and the topics today. Uh, apologies for the, for the technical difficulties. Um, and again, the slides uh, and the recording will be posted. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today, and have a great day.